just to dive into things, mainly wanted to talk about uh, the new album that is coming out, Plain No More. And um, I wanted to, one thing I love as a guy that grew up, you know, with albums, I love the fact that you guys are still not only interested in making songs, but making albums. And from what I read, there was definitely a theme to this album. And there was even a specific order with with having the title track coming at the end. And I'm wondering, you know, in this age of, of digitization and everything being cut and sliced and all that kind of thing, what? how do you guys see albums and what does this, how do you guys see the the purpose behind this album? Selling them, <laughs> the short answer, but because well, it's a, that's the two part uh, answer. Because number one, yes, you have to release singles digitally. That's just the way it works now, which we are, which is why we're making uh, decided to make a video for for every track. Mm-hmm. And, but the fact is that the the people that come to our concerts, which there are a lot of them, uh, want to take home something. And because a lot of them, I would say a lot of them, uh, come from that age, it made sense to do something like that as a gift to them. Also, creatively, that's something we wanted to do, right? So you do you start doing something for yourself, and then you finish it, and then it's out of your hands. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned, you know, you're making videos. So far, you've released two videos, one for The King, one for Plain D'Amour. There is an element to silliness to both of those <laughs> videos. and Really? Yeah. Subtle. Uh, and I'm wondering how, and, and, you know, and even Michael has posted some, some oddball videos you guys have made on the road and stuff like that. How important is silliness to this band and for the mental health of this band? Michael, why do you why don't you explain? <laughs> I think it's an extension of our personality. Odd, to be odd, honest, odd, oddballia. <laughs> <laughs> it's an extension of our personality and how we keep ourselves sane just by uh, having a great sense of humor. And it are, are, was it. Is it all naturally that way, or is it like okay, we've got to, uh, you know, no, kind of scramble well, things up? You know, there's there's a Some serious way. answer, and then there's a you know, there's not really one answer, but yes, silly. I personally, I, I don't take anything seriously. You know, I'm just here to enjoy my life, and I think most of the other guys, Michael for sure, <laughs> is 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 on along the same lines. Gary's like that, you know. It doesn't matter. The the one of the reasons we did it because we just were we were watching these old video. Uh, sorry, it was it the Be- Beatles uh, shorts that they made, mm-hmm. and there was that one where you know they're playing through the song and Ringo's on an exercise bike. Yeah, right, <laughs> and, and someone else is playing a punching bag, and I was like, you know, that's because there's a million probably a billion videos of 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 us of bands miming songs yeah what's the purpose to watching a video on youtube is to get people to watch it past five seconds so it's got to be you know there has to be some kind of interesting component to it right. and so we figured let's just let's just be us we are kind of silly anyways and to me i'd rather watch that than you know like than satan coming down and throwing flames at us and being all serious <laughs> You know, which is which is what you know that that's that's uh, whoever's into that is into that. But I think you know really what 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 the videos do is drive people to to listen to the music on a on a, like a Spotify or an Apple Music. Yeah, yeah. Right? Or, or 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 buy the record, and um, and also, sorry, Michael, I'm taking up all the time. No, no. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> because he because chris made me think this early in the morning (laughs) my apologies i was so i was so relaxed now (laughs) juices are flowing but but no you know so this kind of segues into what the whole album was about right the world needs a little more music now this is this plan d'amour means full of love so that was kind of the message it was a love letter to the great unwashed Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, to me, laughter and silliness 
are high vibration. They make things happy. Whereas, you know, that's in a serious way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I like to think that we're we're lighthearted anyways, and I think we approach it lighthearted. And it, it kind of reminds me of an old monkeys video, and like Derek said, "Hard Days Night Beatles." Right, thing. exactly. So, yeah. So we really went into it with that intention, um, you know, just to to keep it lighthearted to convey, you know, our 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 message of of being full of love and 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 vibrating at a higher frequency with humor and trying to bring people together in such a serious, you know, serious climate, if you will. That's this, you know, yeah, that's kind of what we're I know. About. and you can, you, right. And you can get into, you know, the, 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 just the way the world is now. And it's pretty fucking serious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I think we need to go back from that and remember that, no, it's not that serious. Yeah. Right? We're just here. Here we are. Right. 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 The, the newspaper and things that are, you're bombarded with ads. I go on my phone. I'm talking to Michael about toothpicks mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. all of a sudden an ad for toothpicks comes up. Yeah. You know, this is the world we live in and it, and it, you know, it's like, it's like living in an alternate reality. So this kind of humor and this love thing and, and, you know, brings us back into what we really are. Yeah, no, actually, it reminds me of, uh, uh, to use another old world reference, uh, uh, Johnny Carson once gave advice where he said, during serious times, you tell silly jokes, and during silly times, you tell serious jokes. Right, um, that's, that's, that's perfect. Yeah, that's great. It's like, that's why people laugh at funerals. <laughs> that's, that's the way they deal with it. And that's, you know, to me, I mean, personally, I love that. I'd love if everybody was fucking laughing at my funeral. Yeah. <laughs> And 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 I'm I'm curious. I mean, because I'm a, a, a I'm a multilingual illiterate. There are many languages I cannot speak, uh, and so I, I, I'm totally using that. Okay, <laughs> feel free. So you know, I, I a more I knew, but I had to look up the phrase "plain de more to get the, to get the exact translation. But it's one of those things where full of you know, just the English translation of "full of love" didn't seem to capture it, and I'm wondering if there is a broader meeting with 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 the french term that you know can't be pigeonholed into english necessarily yeah, that's true that's true and that's very astute of you oh i thank you because uh, every language and i don't know that many i just know a little bit of italian and i know french and and the thing is they'll other languages will say things that make no sense in English whatsoever. Right. This this kind of does because, I mean, it's obvious. We could have called it all you need is love, but that would have sounded kind of goofy. And it, <laughs> it, it sounds a little classier in French. <laughs> and it's yeah. plein, plein, like you're smiling, plein, plein d'amour. Right, right. Plein d'amour, plein de force, uh, full of love, full of life. It's just a way to be. Joie vivre. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also, begs the question too to ask what it means. So, therefore, it gives us an opportunity to explain it. Yeah, I mean, but I think it. Ex I think it explains itself. You know what I was going to say, Michael? Exactly. <laughs> I'm not going to say it because we're on a video. How how crude can I be? Oh, I dude, I'm I'm sure you will not top who uh, anyone who's come before. I've, uh... <laughs> but anyway. Um, yeah, it, to me, it is self-explanatory. There's no hidden meaning. It just, it is, it is what it is, but it was mm -hmm. a great question, Chris, you know. And thank you. Thank you. And, you know, cause, and it's, it's the, the whole vibe of it. I did, Michael had a, a fabulous expression that I read in, in this other piece where he said, it's, it's a much needed cultural antidote, which, yeah. um, I thought was a, a, a fantastic way of, of, expressing the feeling that you get listening to this album in and amongst you know all of this and what what also grabbed me was there is a lushness to this sound that you don't hear in a lot of modern rock and it immediately took me back to a lot of of influences of 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 the past and i don't know exactly how to put my finger on it but sonically speaking how do you guys uh, achieve that where it's just 
it's almost orchestral the 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 wash of sound that that comes in at some of these times well there are strings yeah mm-hmm. no, i i know it i know what you mean i'm kind of i'm kind of being silly um i think what happened was you know uh oh god okay so those kind of things kind of came in after not after like some things came before some things came after but but in general like i i've been listening to a lot of lo-fi music like okay. chill hop, just you know when i'm not thinking you know like when i'm cooking or I'm, you know and i love these textures and i was like you know it doesn't really make <clears throat> sense in rock music but but if you listen to these bands like uh elo tears mm-hmm. tears for fears like a more modern tears for fears and stuff like that i you know, i listen to a lot of music and and i think that influenced that and i found like i had to go and search for some of these basically uh lo- lo-fi sounds are taking stuff that somebody did 50 years ago and making it current right so mm-hmm. <laughs> now you know it, it, it I could have just taken an old record and recorded it and fucked with it, but but in this case, the modern technology, you know, I had these sounds. Uh, I can't remember the company exactly, but it was it was it was real recordings of these of these of these lo-fi type sounds, which I thought were really cool, mm-hmm. and nobody objected to me doing it. So it just kind of stayed in there, and then. We got Jason Charbonneau, who plays with John Lodge. Uh, oh. He's a, he's a cellist. Moody Blues. That's mm-hmm. right. So so and we met him on the on the on a cruise ship, and we, we kind of made friends. All of us. He's a really great guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he just sent us. I sent him. I I wrote a, a most of the charts out, but he came up with some things himself. And then what he did was he had his his he got his friend uh, a violinist to play. Tony and uh, they sent all the tracks in and those tracks were layered upon the lo-fi stuff that that uh, we had recorded so that's that's the short answer it wasn't very short was it but no it's all right I like the it long just answer worked out and, yeah and Michael and I with the guitar we did we did a, do a little bit here and there like he played Michael played like through the Leslie and stuff but 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 I would say I don't know Michael if you would agree with this but but I think we stayed pretty just a good classic tone we didn't get too crazy with the guitar no effect. no it was very organic and uh, you know we struck upon a guitar tone that we we really fell in love with and thought that it really worked well and we stuck with that and uh, it kind of embodied the right. uh, the sound so the, right so everything else the lushness you're talking about was. You know, because you can't put too much right. in at a time, or it just sounds like noise. Mush. Yeah. You know, like mush. And it was, and that's another answer. You know, another answer to this short answer was 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 you know the songs were arranged per, yeah. with purpose. So everything, if you listen to it, I don't know how many times you listen to it. Probably once, if at all. Um, no, no, at least a few already. To it more, thank you. Well, but so you, uh, you, so. Then you'll be able to know and uh, to to tell that things are always happening at a different time. There's always a melody going on. There's ve- it's very rare that is that there's a lot of shit happening together. So mm. the violins, the guitar, background vocals will all be singing in unison because you know it's it's you know I'm 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 babbling here, but but you well no you're you're hundred percent right. You get what I'm saying. I look I look at it like a big band arrangement. This is what yeah. I'm but it's also a nod, a nod to what we grew up with. To speak to your early question about vinyl, um, you know, the era of vinyl and the quality of the recordings they were coming out of that era when vinyl was, you know, dominant and superior. That's kind of the approach we had with this. And I think when Derek wrote these songs, he was very deliberate with with his arrangements and his instrumentation um, to speak to that. And I think that uh, we were lucky enough to be able to hit the nail on the head. I mean, I think we're. I can speak for myself. I'm extremely happy with the way it came out and, and extremely proud and uh, happy to be a part of something like this. And I think Derek did an amazing job uh, writing and arranging most of these songs. I mean, I think I think once people start to hear this and start to embrace it, especially fans of vinyl and audiophiles, 
that buy the vinyl and if it translate like it's supposed to like we intended i think that they'll they'll pick up on that and and they'll see the the integrity and the value of of what we were trying to accomplish well yeah exactly and and i'll just the only thing i would add to that was things did when we decided to do those eight songs it became a purpose like i definitely rewrote some of the lyrics to go with the theme of the album yeah. and I re rewrote some of the music like some of the demos i had for those songs were a bit different mm -hmm. and then on top of that a lot of things happened in the studio that yeah. you know and we made a lot of calls in real time and, mm. and one of the things was the way it was weaved together that didn't happen until we were we were there working with our engineer adam mm. who was, he was pretty dialed in with us so i think everything everything hit on all cylinders so to speak as it, as we had mm. hoped but it also kind of evolved as well in the studio and i think that uh you know i i think back to when derek played me some of the videos when i or i'm sorry some of the demos of when I uh, when I first joined the band and, and I remember hearing those demos and being really really excited about um, having the opportunity to work on those but the end result I think far superseded the impression of those demos you know uh, to begin with at least from my my perspective and I think that the rest of the band feels the same way to be honest awesome. with you I do I do yeah yeah is it brought so it's something we're really really proud of collectively and individually I think and and like I said it it, it really speaks to the era that Derek was talking about and those bands that he, he spoke about that that put out quality, quality music uh, in the in the era, the high point of vinyl. So I'm hoping that, you know, that that translates with with this. So, yeah, no, I mean, because personally, I've been getting back into vinyl myself and I'm, I'm hoping to get the vinyl version. I've only heard the electronic version of this so far. Um, but you know and but you do listen and, and it does you know conjure up uh, uh um you know uh, jeff lynn and and all that electric light orchestra but what also grabbed me one of my favorite tracks on this album uh is is called headline and uh you guys uh recently just post posted a little bit of a video of you guys doing warm up backstage where you're going through that that one has this fantastic harmonies going on very much Crosby, Stills, and Nash kind of pure Prairie League vibe. And I'm wondering, did was that all cut live, like all of you guys together, you know, in the studio? Because it sounds that way. Maybe you layered it and it just is magic. I don't know. But I'm curious how that one developed. That's a solid question because I'm trying to remember. But <laughs> <laughs> well, our intention was to do it live. And I'll tell you why. Because that song went through so many mutations. Yeah. over time and it started as when i wrote that song it sounded like it sounded like take it easy by the eagles it had oh. the guitar solo and everything and it was just like a kind of a country rock song and and then we started rehearsing it in the dressing room with it with just the guitar as a warm-up just as a warm-up yeah and then and then the open tuning came and then the next thing you know we did it. and the whole section second section the halftime part of the song didn't even exist yeah. Oh wow! We just kind of, you know, that kind of morphed, and then it's evolved even more. Home and I was listening to, you know, Sweet Judy Blue Eyes, which is, you know, I, I, or 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 Wooden Ships. Yeah, yeah. Those songs. Yeah, it was deliberate because I was like, not deliberate to copy what they were doing, but deliberate to say, you know, how did they arrange this? And a lot of it was was Stephen Stills and that running bass guitar through all the, and that's something that never gets talked about because, you know, you always think of those guys just strumming in his open tunings and they're just <clears throat> all that stuff. But that moving bass is kind of what makes it happen. So I did a, a, a demo of it with, with, with that just for the, the spirit of it. And then, and then Michael, uh, uh, Devin just oh, right there. took it. Cause he, he totally got it. He totally got where I was coming from. And, yeah, he, he and and he, yeah he, and he knows that reference so mm. he did his own kind of thing to it and uh and then yeah we sang it live we doubled everything so that's technically not live is it but but csny record <laughs> they recorded there's about four times over and over and over again yeah if you, yeah if your history books but i think we just doubled ours i'm pretty sure we just sang it and we sang it together so it had yeah, that, and then we we kind of doubled it separately, so it had the cohesiveness to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. 
No, but I mean, I mean even in not, that it's little still change though. If you see us play it live, that was completely different again. So yeah. Okay. Okay. It's a living, it's a living evolution. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's close. <clears throat> yeah. And then uh, talking about, you know, trying to communicate ideas and, and what you're going across. Derek, you do the, the songwriting. You're also a guitar player. I'm curious how you communicate to Michael when you say, all right, I need a solo in this section. Like, you know, there's there's a cool little one in Across the Line. And I'm wondering, you know, like, okay, do you just say, all right, I'm looking for something with this notes? Do you use imagery? Do you, you know, how do you communicate that to what well, you're looking for? I don't think for? there's anything, not, I can't think of anything specific, but, you know, the, it, all I can think about is that when Michael and I work stuff out, we just kind of sit down with an acoustic and just work it out. I, I don't recall ever doing anything other than that. Unless Michael, you remember something that I don't, but, yeah. but that's usually how that's usually how we work things out. And I, you know, I I, I can't remember who did what anymore. Like he, we both played solos on the record or, or in different parts, and you know, and we were playing each other's parts. And there's you know, so at this point, I don't know about that, but you, usually that's what we'll do. We'll just sit down and communicate it i don't i don't recall any ever describing it in no, colors or me. anything other than this is good or yeah you should, we should do something else i think i think we approach it as you know that the whatever was on the demo if we could beat the demo you know and and you know derek would lay out uh a, a, a blueprint of what he wanted and if i could if i could cop it exactly if he'd yeah, like to be able to do that as long as it served the song correctly well, and some of the solos, now that you mentioned it, some of the solos were, were written with the arrangement. Right. Like the song Free. That's why, you know, it wasn't really a solo per se. And then we added the alto sax in there. And then there was just this whole unison thing that happened. And that's hmm. pretty effective. I really like that stuff. I love improv and, and soloing and stuff. But when you're making a record like this, yeah. I, you know, you, it has to be done with purpose, in my opinion, and 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 all the bands that we've been talking about. That one was, I think, was inspired by like a Baker Street Jerry Rafferty type. Oh, oh, of course, yeah, of course, like that kind of stuff. There's another one of the greatest. Yeah, again, speaking to speaking to the generation that we grew up listening to. I mean, this whole thing is 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 a is a a nod to you know our influences you know mm. but having the right guitar solo is important that's definite i remember seeing a, a, a queen documentary where they talked about you know brian may <laughs> you know you know 30 versions of a solo before before in bohemian rhapsody before freddie was satisfied with it mm -hmm. you know we didn't do that but but i i get i get the gist of it you know what i mean because you know it's still music mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and, you, and you just know when it's the right one yeah sometimes you kind of got to play it for a while right and then i'm also curious you know as, as you talked about you know that this is the right sound for this album so you guys uh, with this instance or and, and michael specifically you know michael's a master of of being able to recreate the original tone and feel of a lot of classic songs as he did with all those foreigner tunes when he played with Lou Graham, oh, yeah. as he, as he does now, you know, as you guys do now playing the, the, the classic guess who uh, uh, songs in addition to the newer material. And I'm wondering though, as you, as you record new material, you know, have you ever gotten where it's like, you know, that's not quite a guess who sound that I'm getting right now, or is it just, you know, we're we're now all enmeshed in it, and so that you know whatever it comes out it comes out. That's exactly what it is. The yeah. latter. So the guess who is this? Mm -hmm. Because it is now. Fifty years ago, it was that. Right. Different people. In fact, every hit song had a different lineup. Almost, you know, not yeah. all. Like a couple had the, the that four, but but you know, you know the. If you go through the catalog, especially the songs we play, there were different people, different sounds, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and we're just an evolution of that. We can only do what we can do because it's us. Mm -hmm. So we made, I remember on the last record, 
having this discussion with Will Ivankovich, who co-produced it with me. <clears throat> like in, in, in on that album, we were just trying to come up with all the classic things we like and put it on a record. Mm -hmm. I mean, with with giving a nod to to the guests. Who this time it was like, well, here's what we are. Let's lay it out. Yeah, because that's that's really all we can do. You know, it's not. It's not like we're not celebrating the past because we are. We do it every night. We play those eight songs that everybody wants to hear. Yeah. But 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 the other forty percent of our show is 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 us. Mm -hmm. you know, what else are you gonna do? We're not imitators. Right. Right. There's plenty of of tribute bands for that. Yeah, and you know, to be fair, even with original lineups, that's part of what they happens. Never sound the same. Every, right, because they get older, their voices change, the way they play change. They they get bored, <laughs> whatever the reason is, you, you know. Um, and and like I said, there's there's this whole. You can go to a theater now and see what what's it called, Michael? The concerts live or the, where they do a whole record? Oh, classic get, albums live, yeah, yeah. And they get like fifteen, yeah. twenty people on stage, and it sounds yeah. exactly like everything. the record. Yeah, you know, like that's a thing. Which I would enjoy that in that context, right? But th but that's not what, what what we do, and we're just we're just continuing the trajectory of something that started yeah. over six in nineteen sixty two. Yeah, and I, I don't know. I'm trying to debate whether I would enjoy that or not. Um, you'd have to really, yeah. I think you'd have to go with that in mind. Like I'm going to close my eyes. I don't care what. You know, it's not, they don't even dress up, right? You know what I mean? It's just like guys uh, that, in their jeans or, right. you know, it's not like a show. No. It's, it's just a recreation of music. And yes, I suppose getting up, you know, showering and shaving to go out on a, you know, for an evening could be worth it versus putting your headphones on. And Yeah, but it is, I mean, it's, 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 you know, even if I'm seeing a cover band i like that there's elements of them that can't help but seep into the music so it's not just you know cut and dry um i mean it, like a few years back i interviewed uh the guitarist uh chris reed who's who's out with third eye blind and he talked about um this one particular pop singer and and going to see her show and he said he said it was perfect and after the third song i was bored because there was no sense of you know like everything was down to the atom to the nanosecond planned you know I and know there... I, I really know what he means fuck that just triggered a memory you know i went to see my one of my best friends plays with brian adams ah. this, in no way a judgment but i years ago i went you know he said come on to the show i went to the show and it was like just two and a half hours of hit after hit. Like every, like there's not one song that nobody knows, right? And that's how I felt after about four songs. I'm like, <clears throat> this isn't fun for me. Mm. You know, probably because I'm a musician. I don't know, Michael, have you ever had that experience? I'm just like, this is boring. This yeah. is great, but for, you know, it's fucking boring. You know, I, I, I can go home and listen to the record because it sounds like the record. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, but there's if, also there's if you could have done also, a handstand or something, it would have been. Yeah, there's also the component too, though, Chris, that you spoke about is going to see it verbatim versus seeing a little bit of injected personality, a little variation. There's there's the proponents and opponents of that as well, where people go to the show and say, "It didn't play, it didn't sound like the record," and I'm pissed off. Or people that say, "You know, oh my god, I'm so glad it didn't sound like the record. They took liberties and 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 did things that that were a little bit different if i wanted to listen to the record i'd stay home and listen to the record you know there's that pro and con you can never make everybody happy you can't please everybody so somewhere you have to find the happy medium and 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 the middle ground and try to make everybody happy and that's that's a challenge <laughs> yeah you're never gonna make everybody happy that's that's <laughs> never gonna happen. right so you just back to what we were saying you just got to be who you are and 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 then let the chips fall where they may. Yeah. yeah, and actually, you've you even said in the materials that were released, you know, about this new album, it's about embracing genuineness, um, as as part of an antidote to all that's going on. And I'm I'm curious how you would you know how you would define that 
because there's a lot of people that, you know, are just complete assholes. And they're like, well, I'm being genuine. I'm like, well, no, you're not. You're just being an asshole, you know, and <laughs> disingenuous. Yes. You know, I, 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 I get it because we live in a world now where, 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 um, where black can mean white and white can mean black, depending right. on how somebody describes it. And to me, uh being you know the 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 act of of being genuine is 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 just being you're just not trying to be anything but but who you are and hey if you're an asshole then you're genuine <laughs> you know, an asshole. and then um another song that i, I love besides the single that you've released is um and I love the title. It's it's the pursuit of no regret. And I love when you can have twists of words like that, that there's so much in there. And I'm it's it's kind of a chicken and egg question, you know. Did the title come first or did the song come first? Um, for sure. And and uh, you know, my memory of it was was I was I was years when I wrote it, I was jamming at it by myself at soundcheck. And I couldn't call it. I couldn't call it time after time, which is the line at the end of the chorus. And I remember our sound man came up to us, you know, yeah, yeah, we're gonna, gonna get that right. And I was like, oh no. So, so I just, you know, it is kind of a dumb title. And thank you for noticing it's it, but it was just an, uh, an attempt to have an alternate title, the time after time. But what what am I, what what am what is this song really about? Well, it's not really about that but it is in pursuit of no of, of having no regrets mm -hmm. of having no regrets it's looking inside you know a lot of the lyrics are like that you know one day i'm up the next one not so much yeah you know? and my mind takes on a life of its own i can't stop it it's just this merry-go-round going along <clears throat> trying to find purpose in this whole thing what the fuck am i doing here why am i here why are we all here why are we doing this zoom meeting right now right and right I, <laughs> but yeah and but i just love that it's like you know the pursuit of of not a negative but of of something not there you know which and i totally understand what you said but you know it's um it's one of those little twists of phrase that you know i think it is, is is what part of what makes music and songwriting fabulous is you can get away with those little turns and stuff and they say so much more than just you know uh, uh you know my own fumbling and in, indirectly speaking kind of thing well, no seriously chris i'm happy you even noticed because like that's kind of a subtlety that you know i i don't think most people would, would, would that would go over their heads because why do you listen to music in the first place like men listen to music women listen to lyric right that's it's not true but that's you know but girls don't like Rush, right? <laughs> I was just thinking that. <laughs> I, don't, I know one. I know one girl that likes Rush. But so, so I, I love that you, you're you're making that analogy because really that song, as well as most of the other ones, it's really a spiritual song. It's trying to find. I'm looking to find something. I keep moving, but I'm standing still. I, in other words, and I'm I keep searching for something to believe in, right? I'm using. Yeah. You're for God, that's what you're looking for. Whatever that means to you, that's what you're looking for. So, <laughs> you know, the rest of it is just that's yeah. the intention. the The title and the and and the music is 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 just something to serve it up to, with. Yeah, but, but, that, but that particular one is perfect for the message of the album, and that's why it's that's why it's it's on there because it's 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 another another nugget. Of embodiment of our of the message that uh, is trying to be is trying to be conveyed through the whole bo whole body of work on that on, on Plenda More. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, no, definitely. And 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 for the record, I I did take my wife uh, to a, to a Rush concert once, and uh, uh, she did enjoy it. She she you know because she loves the the music as well. Although if you ask her about it, the first thing she'll say is it's the first concert she's been to where there was no line at the women's restroom. So that's that's so funny it, it's so true i remember they were such a great band because you know i'm from toronto so i saw them you know and first time i saw them was in 1978 
and they were oh, still, wow. still had long hair and they, they were a badass group i tell you what they were so uh, but uh, yeah. i digress you know? <laughs> and then uh one other thing i was curious about is is as you guys have been touring across the u.s Michael has been been posting. He's been stopping in these really interesting guitar shops all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Which you know, as everyone says, you know, if once Which you become, he does. you know, it's everyone. You know, every guitarist I know has a guitar problem. Um, but I'm I'm curious. You know, what Michael do you look for in a guitar? You know, uh, uh, you know, is you know, or what do you listen for in a guitar? What it draws you near. What do I look for in a guitar? You know, it, it, every guitar has its own story in it. And you want uh, mine, don't lie. You want mine, don't lie. I do want yours. Um, <laughs> I had one made. Try, what's that? Inside joke. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's fun to go guitar shopping. It's fun to find treasures, trying to, uh, you know, get to play guitars that we wouldn't normally get to play. And, and um, you know, finding good deals places. Uh, you're always looking for you know, I was chasing tone. I'm a tone chaser. And, and, uh, you know, you're always looking to, uh, expand your collection and not get caught. Um, <laughs> so it, uh, we, we have fun doing it. I mean, wh what do I look for in a guitar? I mean, you know, resonance, you know, I'm looking for the way it feels, the way it plays. It is letting me express what I'm trying to accomplish on the, on the guitar melodically and, and, uh, you know, rhythmically and all that's ease of play and, and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, Derek could probably speak to that too. We have, we have similar, similar tastes and in instruments, but, uh, in some regards and in some, and some others, we have extremely different, um, uh, tastes and in instruments. And I think that that's a good compliment to each other, you know, um, you know, and I think it lends yeah. itself, lends itself on and off stage to, to, to what we're doing. I mean, maybe you can add to that, Derek. I mean, what do you think? No, I have nothing to add other than I, now that you, because I don't think about this stuff because, I mean, number one, when I look at a guitar, usually it's, will this get me laid? <laughs> <laughs> can I afford it? Secondly, uh, beyond that, <laughs> I find it interesting that neither of us play a Stratocaster because, you know, uh, in, you're, you're talking about guitars because pretty much every band I've been in, including versions of this one in the past where all the other guitar players would play a Strat. And I played one for years, but mm -hmm. you know, I, I, we both gravitate to this black Les Paul thing. It's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. You know, There's just some mojo and magic. To, you know, it's, it's, but luckily they don't sound the same because if they did, then, then we'd get into, you right. know, because yeah, you, you know arrangement wise you want things to sound different so you can tell what's going on yeah yeah and when you when you and the les pauls definitely have a certain sound yeah you know? but there's so many differences not in just in our guitars but our our actual tone setups and the way we play right that it's, it's enough and i do have like my les paul is is all you know he's it's all modded <clears throat> i can split the pickups and and i don't is yours like that or no no so i do things like that and i'm kind of weaving in and out michael's more the lead player in the show and stuff like that that's kind of you know so he's got those less paul tones mm -hmm. whereas i'm more focusing on you know just a badass rhythm tone which is usually all i care about you know and I've managed to find one with a with the setup that I have that that I've had for years, and I, I it's reliable. Cool. All right. Well, that about covers everything I had. Is there anything we didn't talk about that you want to talk about? That you know, people always ask us about A, B, and C. But no one ever really asks us about X. Hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I will say that headline comes out June second. Oh, cool! And uh, video and single, and then uh, Plendamore comes out June thirtieth in its entirety digitally, and then with vinyl to follow. Uh, I'm not sure what the date is on vinyl, but everything's available for pre order now at uh, at the label Deco. Is it Deco Entertainment? Is that what it is? Yes. 
Deco Records, Deco Entertainment. It's uh, everything's available for pre-sale. There's a couple of cool uh, vinyl um, collaborations. I think there's a purple splatter. There's a green, limited green color. Uh, what, what do they call that? Hyper green or electric green or something? It looks nice. like throw up green. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really cool um and then cds and all that good stuff to follow so yeah it's a, we're looking forward to uh we're looking forward to that um headline the video is very it's going to continue our uh our our tra trajectory of humorous videos <laughs> uh, yeah that's true and we are doing a video for for every track on the record we've made the decision to do so yeah and it'll be like a, an eight week interval between releases so even though the album comes out june 30th we're going to continue to release videos for each song so because that's what we were told we should do these days yeah no it's very cool and and they are a lot of fun you know i mean you know in a day and age when most people just throw up a lyric video you know or it's just a blank screen and words you know it's fun to see you guys oh, a yeah. not taking yourself seriously and b just having fun with it all and, yeah, yeah. Having, and having fun we are for sure we're, we're we're doing that and we're we're still students of of the music business because it's changed so drastically you know michael understands it probably the best out of anyone in the band but but you know i'm i'm learning and uh and gary gary's getting and like you imagine being 78 years old coming from where he came from to this whole Spotify, digital, like this, you know, what, well, what first, hashtags, you don't even know what a hashtag, he, he, he's thinking about hash browns, not hash. <laughs> <laughs> well, his first video, his first video was the haunted video off the last record ever in his entire career, right? I mean, first music video per se. Yeah. Oh, wow. When they started when the video age came in, mm -hmm. like the, 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 the guess who broke up in 1975 right right we restarted again a few years later but uh um with with another lineup but but basically they never made mu music videos they did what the beatles and those bands did they did like a television spot right right, right yeah certain like it's promo right. film yeah but it's it's great i mean we're just happy that we we can do it and we're we're, we're putting in the effort to do it even though you know we live in different cities and doing anything is, <clears throat> is a challenge and ex and expensive. Yeah, yeah. Although thanks to the technology, it's it's cool that you guys can you know collaborate and stay in touch. You know, well, yeah. And, uh... and I think this is a good way to end it. We did do the record together, and it was on purpose. We 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 you a lot of people do things remotely now, but yeah. I feel personally that to make a record like this, you have to have people together. You know what I mean? Because that's the then the, the joy of the record won't come out if you if you're just sending a track off to your buddy. Right, it's, right. It's just not the same. Yeah. 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 And, we, and we did it with vinyl in mind. I mean, we all played at the same time. All the basic tracks were all cut live off the floor deliberately. Intent, you know. Yeah. And we laughed <laughs> and we ate. And we got goofy in the backyard. It was just <laughs> a wonderful experience for six yeah. or seven days. And I highly recommend anybody any band to try that yeah, that does absolutely. that does remind me at the very you gotta listen but at the very end as, as headline is fading out one of you makes some sound that sounds like i don't know you got punched in the gut or ran over an animal i don't know what it is it, but it was, just... sheep, it was a sheep that was we were corralling out of the studio <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of noises on there you'll hear them on the vinyl they, we left everything in yeah, but I I love that it's just it's it's authentic and it's that you know perfect imperfection that makes it human. Yeah, so you haven't noticed the end of free yet, right? Oh, I'll have to go back. I've I've listened to it a go couple back, of times. Just listen to the last chord and then get okay. back. <laughs> and report back. We did it for whatever. What you know what it is, and we did it for real. It okay. Took half an hour to do it, but we did. It. <laughs>